Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is a brand new day that God has given, and I'm so glad to be in it. I'm not going to tell you about how wonderful God is, and then the fact that he got me up this morning, and so far I've gone to uh, wasn't Burger King, but, uh, well, the one, the, 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 the fast food place that they call, that old pork go and eat at in the morning time. Yeah, went down and got me some biscuit and gravy. But the man, most magnificent thing, uh, thing that I am truly glad of is that I have another chance to see if I can glorify God. And to me, glorifying God is looking after one another, doing something that benefits you as a representation of that power I can't see. So for those of you who don't understand that you can't see, that you can recognize it in me and others like me. You know, my basic focus has been at one time, the love ministry, life of victory, eternal. At another time, it was called the moment of truth. At another time, it was called paradise on earth unlimited. At another time, it was called basic human rights for all people. But my primary focus now has got to be creating a new America, our America. An America that expresses the generations that's living today to carry us forward and not to ride on the back seat of yesterday's understanding of America. That was kind of ugly. It got us here, but it was ugly. We just don't want to go forward on the ugliness. We want to go forward on the beauty and the love of life. You know, some people say we've been cursed and that we got to hustle and go through all of the turmoils of life because of something that happened in the beginning of time. But I'm of the understanding that if we could recognize in the beginning of time that all we had to do was to apologize for anything that we'd done wrong, made up our minds that we wanted to do the proper things, I believe that the power that is responsible for us being here would have said, welcome back. That's what you would tell your kids when once they wake up and realize that they perhaps were on a different track that was really damning to them. And so I want to make that focus, creating a brand new America, our America. And my focus, as far as the message goes, is about the power that we can't see, how it's going to affect the younger generations. You know, the little innocent babies that are being born at this moment right now, those with those little bright eyes who have no understanding about anything. They don't even know that they're here. And then those toddlers who recognize that they're here and they're just going around having the most wonderful time that they could possibly have. And for those that's a little bit older who are beginning to understand some of the things that they like and the things that don't that they don't like. And some of those who and they all, my friends, come in different shades. They got different grades of hair. They got different color of eyes. But the blood that flows through their veins are all the same. It's red. And believe it or not, each and every last one of them will have ambitions for peace and prosperity and freedom and joy in their lives and for the fulfillment of their dreams. And I want to set, based upon the, my understanding and our understanding of their creative power, set the mold that it will be something that they can easily recognize and easily pursue. And I don't want to turn away from my older people, but the point of it is, especially since I'm old, the point of it is that most of them are set in their ways and you can't tell them anything. They swear they love God with all their heart and they're walking around in bondage and you try to show them a way out and they cannot hear it. You try to show them even in their own scriptures that there is fallacy there. They won't accept it. They believe every word that in there is true. You say, well, if you can believe that God talked to them, then why can't God talk to you? And if you think God can't talk to you, believe that he can talk to me because I'm an evidence that he can. They don't want to hear that. And then when they tell you that the only truth that there possibly is or any reference to it is in the Bible, and you ask them why they say that, they say because the Bible said it. Well, that's a battle that's already defeated. But you young people, I'm not talking about you old people and I'm not talking about you children. I'm talking about those of you who got jobs. I'm talking about those of you who are working and making minimum wage. 
I'm talking about those of you who are in the streets who seems if you can't find anything to do. I'm talking about your prostitutes. I'm talking about your drug dealers. I'm talking about those of you who find yourselves committing acts that getting you locked up in jail and sometimes going to prison. I'm talking to you because you recognize that there's all kinds of things wrong. And you recognize that the religious community, whether it's Muslim, Christianity, or anything else, has failed you. And you are really on the brink of believing nothing. But I want to talk to you. I want you to know that you are loved. The reason you do not see it, the reason you don't feel it, is because God has set up a way that the message of love would be channeled through people through us, through those who supposedly know God. And when you don't see that channel through them, that's because they don't know God. Don't get angry with them. They just don't know God. They think they do, but they don't. They've been, it's like saying, you're a slave because I need you to be a slave. And the Bible says that I can use you for a slave. Now, you, you won't buy into that. But there were people at one time who bought into it and they are perpetuating that fallacy even today. I want you to know that in order for you to re reap the rewards of the Heavenly Father, you're going to have to take a position on some things. And basically that position starts with recognizing that there is one power that any individual is to be subservient to. You can't see that power, you can't touch it, can't feel it, but the evidence is all around you. And that is God, that's what I call it. You can call it anything you want to call it, but it is that power that you should be subservient to. And no other power. Some people say, well, you gotta have government. Sure, if that government is based upon that power, then sure, you don't have any problem. But any power that tries to force you to be obedient to it, when it alone and it itself works against your best interest, you don't have to do anything. You have a choice to make. You don't give that up unless you choose to. If this system or if that government or if that power wants to force you to be obedient to it, and it takes away your freedom, it takes away your prosperity, it takes away your hope for joy, it takes away from you the access to education as you might desire. It takes away from you health care as you might need it. And going to force you to be obedient to it. It has got to be out of its mind. And you out of yours if you bow down to it. Well, no, that's what the older generation is doing all the time. And when you go to church, they try to get you to fall in line. What to say? Obey the government that got rule over you, not expressing and understanding that no man can serve two masters. You either serve Caesar or you serve God. The only one that's serving Caesar are those who don't know God. And that means a lot of them think they're serving God, but they're serving Caesar. So what I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You young folks, when you're doing the things that you're not proud of, you're just trying to survive. I want you to Stop trusting or not trusting in the powers that supposedly got control over you and put your trust in the Almighty. Now that means that when you find yourself being forced to do some things, whether it's cheating, lying and stealing, trying to get over, just go down to those officials. You got a mayor in your city who went out and publicized before you the people saying that he was the best, he or she was the best one for your uh, uh, correction. That's a bad choice of word. But they're the best one to lead you out of the mess that you're in. That's what they say. And then they go sit up in the office, they get in the paycheck, they got uh, support with the aldermen and councilmen and other organizations, and they represent a system of government that they are keeping in place, that's keeping you where you're at. But you are now recognizing that it is your responsibility to demand more of them. So you, if you have to go alone, you go to your local officials. But 
as you're out there in the streets, you're not alone. Talk to these people that's out there just like you. If you're hanging on Fifth Street in St. Pa Paul, Minnesota, because there's nothing to do and you're just hoping that something happens that you can take uh, advantage of, you guys, go down to that mayor's office. He, he, who he wants to be somebody, give him the opportunity to be somebody. Go down there and tell him you're dissatisfied with your place in life. Tell him what your situation is. And say, if you want to be our boss, if you want to be our leader, you got to deal with this. Demand that they deal with it. And if they can, great. And if they can't, and even if they can, it's not sufficient enough. So you spread your message out. Not to just this neighborhood or on Fifth Street, but throughout St. Paul. Throughout St. Paul, all the different little areas, communities, and towns. Because you're not alone. All of you out there, people everywhere, are going through the same thing. Some call them up and out of poverty. Some call them welfare rights. Some call Black Lives Matter. All kinds of things. Come together and take this to the next level, the state. I'm repeating myself, but maybe you didn't hear that other message, so I have to say it here. You guys go to the state. Everybody that's going through these changes, go to the state. You might have your particular interest, but recognize that your interest is not a single interest now. It's a collective interest. And you're not satisfied with someone trying to address a portion of it. It got to be addressed in its entirety. You tell that governor the same thing you told that mayor. You said you wanted to be the leader. You said you had some ideas. You said you could do something better for us than any of those other guys could. And you got in office. Now we want you to know that we're dissatisfied with our position in life. You tell them that. I'm telling you what to tell them. Tell them you are dissatisfied with your position in life. That you want a better life and you want them as a, a leadership to take care of this business. You demand that they do it. If they can do it, fine. You can relax just a teeny weeny bit. Don't stop. But then they're probably not because they're keepers of the system. And now this calling for people in every city, in every town, in every state, 50 states that have combined themselves together and you go to the national government and you say the same thing that you said to your mayor, same thing that you said to your governor. Now you're saying it to the national institutions. You are fed up with it. They have failed you. They are in Washington, your senators, your House of Representatives, your uh, judiciary. You got all of these people, the president, that stand up on before the world. We're the most powerful nation. We got control of this and control of that. Well, you let them know that they also got control of the hell that you're going through and you want them to release it. You want them to do better and recognizing that they are keepers of the system. Let them know how the system that they are keepers of is screwing with you, messing with your life. And you have been enlightened now by the power of them that they cannot see. You used to couldn't see, but now you can and it has awakened you. And that's why you're standing before them demanding that they take care of what they say they can take care of. And if they can't, they got to get to stepping. Now, all of you across the nation, you're doing this. And they won't be able to, to take care of the business. You're going to have to force them out of office. But what you must do is not just force them out. Be prepared. Be prepared to deal with what they have failed to deal with. That is, to make sure that the resources of America are used for the benefit of all Americans. Make sure that everybody plays a role in that process so no one is getting a, a skating. No one is just getting over. No one is getting by. And to give them joy in doing it, make sure that whatever they're doing is their choice. Not just placing people some, in some places, in some spot, but giving them the opportunity to choose themselves what it is they love to do. That's going to be that fountain of their joy doing what they came in the world to do. Can you imagine what joy that is, knowing what you are about, and now you're about it? Now, the unique, wonderful thing that God has done is that everything that they choose to do is interconnected. 
It's connected like your fingers to your hand. And everything that you do complements something else. All for the common purpose of creating the resources and goods and all of those things that you have determined are essential. Some for your survival, some for your joy, some for your pleasure. Just life itself. That's how unique God is. Not man. Man got some old bias concerned about himself. His kind. His racism. His prejudices. That doesn't work for you. But now he's gone. Stone aside. And recognizing that you're still being led by the spirit of God. But all of you can't just come together and do these things. You're going to need representatives. But you now have determined what it is that needs to be done. Not only have you determined what needs to be done, you've determined by the power of understanding how it's to be done. So now you're choosing individuals to do it. People might want to say, well, I'm, I'm with that. I can carry that forward for you. It's not that they got their own head minds working. You are, it was your mind. It's that and it's working. They're just there actually carrying it out. And that could be anybody who understands it. Put them in that position. And what, what are their pay? Their pay is the same thing that you are being paid. They are responsible for carrying forward that which you have determined that you want done. You are the boss. They are part of the boss. Now they're just carrying out what you have said, do. Everybody's blessed. Nobody is absent any of these things. Now, you would think that these seniors, these 80-year-old folks, 90-year-old folks, 70-year-old folks, 60-year-old folks who've been going through all of this hell in their lives, some of them, whether they were poor or whether they were rich, you think they would understand what I just got through saying. You think that they would want this, but they can't. They've been so brainwashed and fed some stuff so deep that what I'm saying right now sounds ludicrous. It sounds absolutely stupid. Enough for them to call me a stark naked fool for thinking like this. You see that? That's what we got to deal with. They are not just commoners. They are people in church who are using God to say that this is true. They got those guys in church talking about the only way you get live a life like this is to work hard for the devil, get the devil's money, and come give it to them so they can live higher like the devil. They don't care about you, and then it's in the church. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that stuff has got to be buried. Buried, not necessarily forgotten. And maybe some of it should be forgotten. Somebody say, don't forget your history. You might repeat it. Well, I tell you something, for 200 years or more, we haven't forgotten our history, and we are repeating it. So sometimes we should just, like a newborn baby, come into a world where you don't know any of that stuff, and go forward, and that stuff doesn't even matter. All you want to do is go forward, and you can tell when you're backsliding, when something is good, and all of a sudden it starts getting bad. You don't have to go back to your history because you didn't fix it from that. You fixed it from the forward. So when you something start going bad, you fix it right then and right there. Forget that dead stuff. You are alive. And it is living. It is life that makes that stuff right. Not dead. So I don't want to take any more of your time right now. I'll probably be talking to you again today if the Spirit says so. But the concept is creating a brand new America, our America, not the founding father of America, not these guys who wrote a constitution's America, not the slave owners America, not the prejudice America, not the make America great again America. It's all of us, all of us with a brand new idea, a brand new heart, a brand new spirit of life and it in abundance. And we carry it forward. Now those dead folks, we're going to drag them along. We're going to have to embarrass them by doing something good and successful. 
We're going to have to make them ashamed that they are back there sitting on their butts doing nothing all this time. But we're not doing that to make them ashamed. We're just bringing them along because that's what life does. That's what love does. It doesn't just forget them. It wants to, what, rejuvenate the same kind of stuff, life that's in us, in them. You know, gold. Been back a long time. It can still be used. But you got to use the gold. Gold is not going to do anything on its own. So hear my message. Understand my heart. Recognize that it's all from God. And the evidence is that it's for you. For you. You receiving the spirit. You taking care of business. It's not a Republican. Not a Democrat. Not just a man. Not just a woman. It's the spirit in you. Don't you forget that. The spirit in you. Until next time. This is Eddie Marcus saying. Goodbye.